Hi, it's Todd from Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and I'm back with the trebuchet again. But it's going to be slightly different today because I'm working with the guys from History Hit, putting together a video for them, and we're doing one for me at the same time. And so what we're doing is we're looking about at the role of the longbow and the trebuchet in warfare. Now, the trebuchet was not really an open battlefield weapon, not in Western Europe. The thing is, though, it was used on sieges at the same time as longbows. So both were used against fortifications. So we're basically going to play a game today where we're going to shoot at a fortification and we're going to see who wins it. Is it Joe? Is it the trebuchet? So here's our teams today. I'm working with Louis. Luke is working with Joe. And we're going to find out what happens. So what we've got with the trebuchet is our bowling ball here, our rock. Now with crenellations on a castle, it's just going to go straight through them. And the result on the other side is going to be devastating. And this ball is likely to go straight through these pallets. Maybe it'll take out one guy maybe two of them, maybe three of them. Or if you're familiar with this channel, you'll know I'll probably completely miss because that's what the trebuchet seems to do. And so it's all a bit of a game. It's all a little bit of fun today, but we've got our guy in the middle, uh, 25 points, his bodyguard going at 10 points and any other guy that they hit at five points. What do I think is going to happen? Well, I think Joe is going to absolutely trance the trebuchet because we know it just doesn't work for hitting these guys. They are invulnerable, but let's go find out. How do you rate our chances against a longbow today? <laughs> Well, you've got a few things going on, but basically ours are much heavier, much less prone to wind, and there's quite a lot of wind today. And so when they do hit, they will really hit hard. Yeah. The problem is, it's not that accurate. It's against fortifications, it's not against individual people, which is what we're trying to do today, really. I mean, if we get one shot to land, then yes, it should be really good, especially if it lands on the right part. So if we hit in the middle of the pallet, it'll probably just go through. If we hit on the edge where the reinforcement is, then it'll probably just whack a whole load of pallets out there and that'll take out a bunch of guys. Exactly. Quality over quantity, yeah, I think. I think so. And how do you feel going up against the trebuchet? Uh, it's a big machine, isn't it? It is, but yeah. you should have more control. But I mean, it's about a football size distance yeah. away. I reckon I've got a pretty good chance of getting a few of the uh, men at arms down there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What, what about the king? Sniping the king. That would have been amazing back in the day. Yeah. Can you try and recreate that for me? I'm going to do my best. I reckon best. There's a good shot of me getting him, I reckon. Yeah. So this is a proper war bow. It would have been used in medieval times, this draw weight. So because it's a high draw weight, you need a big arrow. So yeah. big half inch diameter, tapered down to three eighths, a big nasty head, some big feathers to um, stabilize it in the air. And how long did it take to really get used to that draw weight of, of 140 um, So I've been shooting since I was sort of 13. 14, so and I'm 36 now, so a long time. So to work up something like this and to shoot it accurately, yeah, at least five years. Five years, yeah. okay. You can understand why they banned sports, so yeah. and made people uh, just focus on this. Yes, yeah, so five years of sort of two, three times a week. You know, if you don't do it, you, you can't do it. Well, I've got a lot of faith in you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> let's see how we do. Cheers. Right, Todd, let's get ready for our first shot. How do we load this thing? Yeah, well, it's not instant. I'll tell you that. Okay. <laughs> because as I said at the beginning, we've got to charge it up. Yeah. And there's half a ton there that we've got to charge. So really the first thing is that we've got to start pulling this rope down, which as you can see, I can do it a little bit. And that has got to go all the way down. So we do that with a winch here. Okay. So that goes in and you can do as much of this as you want. Because it's really quite tiring. Excellent. <laughs> so you do this for about the next five minutes. And at the moment, it's easy. So what you want to do, just I'll just talk you through one more. Yeah. So I'm pulling it, I'm moving my whole weight because really it needs some. Yeah. And you pull back and then rather than just letting go, you just make sure that the ratchet there binds. Got it. Okay. So just bring it back easy. So pop That's this it. Yeah. in there. That's it. That's it. If it comes. Okay, yeah, so it needs a fair bit of force. It does, and, and for one or two winches like this, it's fine. You know, but if you're doing this hour after hour, you are gonna get very tired doing it. But of course, the big ones would have, you know, manpower, labor, it was never a problem in the medieval times. No, that's true. So, you know, there would be rounds of men doing this. And what do we know about how these things would have been transported to the battlefield? I mean, that's a, that, that is a really good question because this machine is relatively small. So these timbers are six meters long. Now, if we imagine three times up, that's an 18 meter timber. Yeah, you can split them down, but we're talking 
massively long, massively heavy timbers that yeah. might weigh several tons for the main ones. Those are difficult things to move around the countryside. I suspect what was going on was that the trigger system, the winch system, the things which were critical, maybe the big pivots, all of those big bits of ironwork that are difficult to do on site, you take those with you. But actually, the main timbers, which you can source something locally, yeah. just do that. Well, we can see exactly how this is working. This arm is gradually coming it's down, coming isn't down. it? So I'm just going to step around now. And we need to just thank you for doing all this work for me, Bill. Oh, not a problem. So we now need to get this trigger into position. So it's going to go into that loop there. And we're in. So now, in fact, what we need to do is back this off a little bit so the trigger picks up the weight. Okay. So I need you to push down on the handle a little bit. Push down here. Yeah, so we, that's it. Now, if you lift up that uh, ratchet bar, nope, this one here, that's it. And just slowly, slowly with your right hand, yep. being aware that obviously it's got some power, just relax, relax the right hand a little bit and let the arm go back up. And that will put some power onto this trigger. So keep on coming. You can see the chains are slack. They'll need to go tight. That's it. That's it, a bit more. You can drop the ratchet bar back in now. So move the, that's it. So in okay. fact, you can now see how this trigger works. So what we've got here now, so we're safe because we're on the ratchet, but you've got what's called a slip hook. So this curve here, this slip hook is really important because if that came down there, if you pulled the trigger, you'd actually have to pull the arm downward to get the trigger out, and it would be incredibly heavy. If that comes out like that, it ends up being a hair trigger, that a tiny movement here and it will go. So actually that curvature there exactly is a radius around that point. So what that means is just a little bit of pull on here to overcome the friction and the trigger will release. Great. So it looks scary. It looks simple, but it's really effective. Yeah. And so now this arm has got that half ton of weight, kind of yeah. the, the, the pressure is cranked up. So I guess the next thing is our projectile. Not quite. Okay. <laughs> Not quite. So safety, safety. And they did this too. So there is in fact one system, one trigger system that may have come off a trebuchet okay. in Sweden. It has a safety pin through it. Oh, nice. So they okay. absolutely knew what it was all about. Yeah, they couldn't even escape health and safety in the, they couldn't. In the medieval period. So now, obviously if we released it, all of this system here, um, is going to try and unwind the winch. It's just not going to work. So I'm just going to take the pressure off that. So now we have everything on the trigger. So the trigger should hold. If it fails, we've got our safety here. But now what we need to do is unwind all this rope. So that now needs to get walked up to the top. So this basically just needs to be held out of the way. Because of course you don't want it catching up on the system as it goes through. Exactly. I've now got to get into the middle of this machine. So we're leaving the safety in place at the moment. Makes sense to me. Yep. So this is quite a long string in that our trebuchet is going to attach to. So. Again, this is, I suppose it's the length of the arm. Is this, is this to, to increase the range, the longer this, uh, this piece of rope is, this sling? It's one of those really difficult things. I'd love to give you a simple answer. Yeah. I can't. The problem is everything is related to everything else. So the angle the arm comes down, the length of the, of the arm, the weight of the trebuchet, how far the trebuchet spindle is to the main spindle, the length of the sling, the weight of the projectile, all these things relate to each other. Yeah. And you change any one of them, and the performance of the, of the machine alters. Yeah. I can say that if you shorten the sling, it will shoot a little bit flatter. Got it. This is the pin we were talking about earlier. I see, yeah. So the angle of that pin, the length of the pin, it all changes how this thing shoots. So you can just hook that on there. As you can tell, my head is now in the workings. So I'd rather you didn't get your head in, okay, but okay. this is why we out. keep the safety on. So now I'm just making sure that the sling is doesn't twist in midair, so it's not tangled. And we can now load up, remove the safety, ready to go. All right, Todd, so 
Now's the good bit, right? Now's loading our first bowling ball. Yes, so safety still, we've got our safety line on. Uh, but the ball goes in. I'll do all this if you don't mind, but yeah, do you no, want to shoot? No problem. I'd, I'd love to, all right. I'd love to. Then it shall be done. Red bowling ball. Yeah. Lucky color. So I'm just making sure now that the lines are not tangled. So we're all good now. And that all feels good, I think, is it? Not quite, I'm just gonna stick a little bit of grass under it. It's just, that's just basically to create a little lump, stop it rolling forward. Got it. There we go. Right, safety off. So if you pick up the rope. Okay. I'm gonna Let's stand see. behind you, remember, if it goes up in the air, keep an eye on it and then jump out of the way. Okay, first shot, shot one. Let's do shot this, one. Todd. All right, fingers so crossed. I'm giving this a big pull. Yep. Three, two, one. Go! Oh, I love it every single time. Oh, I love it. Goodness. Ooh. Oh, goodness. And then it rolled oh, and touched. I think. So just short. Just short. Oh, so a big but, splash in the moat. But, but do you know what? I almost don't care because that was so good. <laughs> I've looked at the footage, slow mo footage before, and you can make it go a little bit further by adjusting things like we okay. said. And it actually releases at a really steep angle. Yeah. And if we dropped it a little bit, then that would help it go that bit further. But my other experience, don't change it on the day. So Joe, that was very close to hitting the king, actually. I was getting a bit worried there. So they've got the line right, which puts a bit of pressure on, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Who are you going to aim for? Or are you just going to aim in the sort of general direction? I'm going to aim for the, for the king. Okay. But um, obviously I've had, to no, hear. I've had no warm-up shots or anything, no, so yeah. I'm going straight in cold and we'll see what we can do. Oh, I heard a sound. Do you reckon you hit one of the, Maybe. the boards? It looked a bit long, but um, I've definitely hit something there. But you've got the line yeah, right, yeah. you've got the line. Okay, that bodes well for the next shot. Right, Todd, I'm slightly worried about Joe's first shot because we heard it clank into something, It hit didn't something, we? yeah. But we've got a trebuchet. We can't lose with a trebuchet. We need one good one. Come on, let's do it. Let's, right. let's go for shot two. So this time I've gone, that fell short. So we've gone for a slightly lighter ball now. Got it. Uh, so we're 300 grams lighter. And we'll see what this does. So this should go a bit further. All yours again. Thank you very much. All right, shot two. Shot two. Come on, Todd, this is it. Cross those fingers. Hey! I think that's the wind. I, that's got to be the wind, surely. It's, it's wind or it's ah. just all the chaos of those variables I was talking about. So that was six, seven meters to the right hand side. We're going to need a bigger castle. <laughs> you feeling confident? Yes, yeah, it's, it's slightly more windier, but it shouldn't affect them too much. It's such a low trajectory for me that it shouldn't really be catching the wind a great deal. So I'm just going to do the same things I did last time. Cool. And it is, so does the wind affect the trebuchet more? Because we, we saw their, their bowling ball sort of veer um, off to the right a bit. Or should it technically affect you more? It should affect me more. Right, okay. My arrows are a lot lighter, but um, it's hard to say whether it's affecting the trebuchet or not. Right, Todd, third time lucky. It's got to be. It's got to be. <laughs> no, it hasn't. <laughs> we're going to try a, di a different tactic there, right? A different uh, kind of ball. We're, we're going to go a little bit cheaty. Okay. So if you have a look at this one here, so this is a little bit lighter than yeah. the first one we threw. So it should go a tiny bit further, yeah. but it's also cracked as heck. Ah, yes. So uh, this is just from hitting stones previously or something. I'm expecting that it will land and it will break up and maybe some of these bits, you know, it's, it's cheating, but who cares? Yeah. Some of these bits will go on to take out some of our chaps. Yeah, what we really need is a fuse in here so, so it explodes midair, but we probably can't do that right That's now. That's a different film. Okay, let's, okay, let's load this thing up, go for shot three. Right, we're ready to go. Shot three. Shot three. This one's going to do it. This one's Goodbye. Do it. Come on. Nice! Oh, I love it every time. I love good. it. It's looking that good. That line is good. Oh! Stayed in one piece as well. So everything didn't work. Oh, no. So I'll, even, even the lightness of the ball didn't necessarily carry. I think it's the wind. It's got to be the, the wind. Well, the wind can't help. I yeah. mean, 
it's windy here, but it's a lot windier up there. But, yeah. and here's the big but, it's going to affect Joe a lot more than it will affect us. This is what has been infuriating me about this machine for months. That ball there is lighter than that one. And it's gone 10 meters less. And it's that variability. Every single shot has got so many variables in it. You get kind of accuracy. It kind of goes down here, but it doesn't do that pinpoint accuracy that you need for a game like this. Ah, frustrating, isn't it? Let's go see, let's go see shot two. So shot two was a lighter ball. You'd yeah. expect it to go further. It did go further. But importantly, uh, well, in fact, you can see here, that's where it struck. Okay? Ah, you can see the impact. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, that's a good distance to be fair. So that's, that's a little bit misleading, isn't it? Ending up over because there. Because it's rolled on. But in fact, had this been online, yeah. it may or may not have gone through one of those pallets there. Those walls could have come down. They could have come down, yeah. And then shot one. Yeah, uh, well, best of the lot, ultimately. This is, def this is definitely my favorite. It's, it's kind of sad that the momentum ran out sufficiently that it, it kind of just, just tapped the wall, right? Yeah. Rather, than, rather than smashing through. But we had cause for optimism at that point. We did. I mean, you know, I've been doing this for a while. I know not to get too excited. I love the shot and yeah. the result less exciting. But here we are. So this was the, uh, the first arrow. So it's just gone a little bit too far and a little bit too wide. Uh, possibly wind conditions. Yeah, a bit of wind. I may have just pulled it on that on that third shot. Yeah. Now this one, I mean, there would have been people around here. We're just unlucky yeah. that there hasn't been a target put if, up in this place. If you follow the the angle of that one, it's just it would have just clipped. You know, oh yeah. Just literally coming over oh, the so top. Would have just come. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, just over come in the and just of in. the king's head. Now speaking of the king. Now when I came over here, I saw this was the first arrow we okay. had, and man. I thought this has got to be really, really close. Yeah, yeah. And if we come around here, let's have a look. You can see right here. Oh, I believe. Oh yes. <laughs> you've managed to hit on your first go because that—that's the only one that it could have been because yeah. that was the only Fre one we heard yeah. the noise. And it's fresh target as well. So fresh target, yeah. no warm up, and you've hit the king in the head, sniped him. Yep. Twenty-five points. So I'm just going to make the sling a little bit longer, thirty centimeters a foot and that should make them cast further, should. So let's just do this one. Come on then, Jenny. Let's... Yeah, if you start to untangle that one, I always like to just put the end cords through the weave of the rope. It's not really technically a very good thing to do, but it weakens the rope in fact, but the kind of loads we're putting through it, which is significant, but much less than the breaking strain of the rope. It doesn't worry me. Sailors, on the other hand, will be looking at this and having a heart attack right about now. There is a danger as that ball comes through now that it could end up hitting the winch system. Okay. Because everything's changed now. Clearances have changed. So we need to be aware of that. So we'll go to the end of the rope this time. Got it. Do you know what, Todd? I'm gonna, just, just for the change, just for the change in, in, in tactics. I know what's coming. You're gonna pull it this oh, time. All right, <laughs> No problem. Desperate times, desperate measures, loose! Oh, I mean, it, it just feels great every time. Come on, a bit right. Oh, oh. Uh, yes! Oh, yes. oh. Hey, is, is that a that, hit? That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. It's a five... thank you, sir. The it's first a... time ever. Oh. Right, Joe. Pressure's on. They somehow managed to hit one of the targets. <laughs> Only five points, though, so not too much pressure. You, you were saying the bow's a little bit wet now. There's been some rain in the meantime. Has that affected anything? Um, Will that affect anything? Uh, it just makes it a little bit slippery, um, but yeah, not doesn't really. It should be all right. Nothing on you, mate. Yeah, Don't no, worry. that's fine. Right, let's try and get some more points. Let's do it. Right, Joe, for entertainment purposes, we're gonna actually take our final shot before they take their okay. final shot. Yeah. Now, I'm getting a bit worried, but if you hit anything here, <laughs> we wipe them out of the game, okay? Yeah, yeah that, that's, that, it. that's it. So, okay. uh, so should we give it a go? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna do the same as before. Same as before. Fingers crossed. <laughs> no change of tactic. I mean, they've had a bit of a change of tactic here, but... No. 
No, nope. same as. They, they were worried they changed their tactics. Ah, that's it. Okay, we're in their heads. We're in their heads, <laughs> Joe. Go on, go for it. Ooh, I heard a ping there. I heard a ping. They're looking worried over there. Right then, Todd. The hmm. rain is pouring. It's time for our dramatic final shot. We've got our lucky red bowling ball. What can go wrong? Everything. Right. <laughs> now, what we've got to do, and it, we can win. We, we can we, win. Of course we can. So if we get we the king, or if we get king and one of the bodyguards, which is possible, yeah. then we're in. Honing in on that red palette. Yeah. yeah. So, a little bit of finger crossing might be handy, but the, the last one, the range was brilliant. Range was brilliant. So our little sling adjustment was exactly what we wanted. The line wasn't quite right. No. But now is our moment. This is it. This is it. Okay. This is going to be a big moment for history here and Todd's workshop. Come on. This is. Lace! Oh, lovely. That's oh, good. Go on. Bit right. Bit right. Uh, oh. 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 It touched it again. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, listen, Todd. That was. We've hit the castle twice. Ah. Uh, Man once. Yeah. It's actually, for this thing, it's a pretty good day out. Right, guys, I'm not sure if we've learned anything of historical importance today, <laughs> but we've certainly had fun, haven't we? Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, I was very, very surprised that you managed to, to hit one of those one of those nights with the, with the trebuchet. I mean, you were getting very close each time as well. Mm. Just a little bit extra, even with that adjustment, I think you would have knocked the whole thing down. It was good. I mean, the adjustment was definitely worth doing. There's no doubt about that because it did take it a little bit further. But I think actually I'll probably give it a little bit more actually on that and make the ropes a bit longer. But I think the other thing that we have learned is we didn't see the devastation of the balls hitting, but you you know that seven kilos dropping from 40 meters in the air is going to do something. Absolutely. So you can see that Joe's weapon is an individual weapon. It's shot by one man at one man. This thing is shot by a crew of men at a bunch of men. And, and that is the fundamental difference of them. He has accuracy. We clearly didn't. <laughs> wow. Well, well, yeah, let's, let's three, out, three out of five hit yeah. something. <laughs> that, that's true. And, and the other thing is, in my head, it was spectacular in my dreams. <laughs> yeah. Reality, not so good. Well, I think we should talk about that shot. Very yeah. first shot without yeah. any practice. Managed to snipe the king mm. straight in the head. So it just shows a combination of this weapon and archers. I mean... I'm, I'm just going to chime in there, actually, because people don't realise... I'm bigging you up here, Joe. They just don't realise how good he is. I'm telling you now, Joe did not do a single test shot today. No. He went there, he picked up his bow, he shot, and he put it through the guy's head. I mean, a guy with a sniper rifle would be proud of that <laughs> shot. They actually would. And I'll tell you what, Louis, it was a lot better than we could have done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's forget about that video. Joe, is that, is that one of the best shots of your life? Uh, it's a good shot. I wouldn't say the best shot, but it, yeah, it's a decent shot. That's a hole in one. That's a hole in one. <laughs> it is good. Right, well, cheers, Todd. Thank you for today. Absolute it's been, pleasure. It's been yeah, great really. fun. Thanks, guys. And, and Joe. Joe. Thank you. Joe, cheers. thanks very much. Thank cheers, you. mate. Cheers. All right, so we're here. This is our final shot. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's just a bit of adjustment. I mean, it looks, you know, it's not that great. But they're both there. They're both against the wall. They're fairly close together. Actually, a little bit more length on the sling, and we would have been coming in there. It's not, yeah, the grouping is, is not too bad at all. Mm. I mean, we've knocked... We've knocked the wall in. I mean, maybe not if it's a stone wall, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't show off too much about that. <laughs> I think it's I think it's nearly nearly falling down there. Let's have a look at our yeah. our sort of piece de resistance, the the actual the hit one on a guy. We actually got. Yeah, I mean, we took the ball away for our last because it was yeah. our lucky ball. But I mean, it seems like it's it's hit the pallet and moved it backwards. We'll I have to look so. at the football. No, no, no. Have a look. Ah, red mark. So we did hit him. I guess we hit him on a bounce, but it's gonna well, it's gonna break your knee. Definitely, he's he's taken out. He's taken out, he's taken out of action. A yeah. five pointer, not quite enough to win the game, but yeah. But at least it's no, not no points. Yeah, it's uh, and a first and a first for your trebuchet. Hitting it is one the of first. Yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. Big enthusiasm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, it is the first. Yeah. So I've hit these guys with arrows. I've hit them with darts and spears and a plumbata and all sorts. This is the first for me hitting them with the trebuchet. I think what you need, Todd, is just loads more of these guys, and then there's probably. <laughs> I think that's cheating. I think that's cheating. But one day I will land a ball you know, 
straight right straight through the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, King Cam over there didn't see that that epic shot of the ball coming towards him. But yeah. never mind. One never day, mind. just not this day. Yeah, so it's it's a thanks to Louis and Luke and Joe here for well, let me play again because it's always good. But this was just an extraordinary shot from Joe. First one of the day, first shot of the day, 140 yards, basically through the, the guy's face. Now this, of course, was representing the king. And you shoot the king on a battlefield, morale falls apart. So that really would have been, first shot of the day, a battle winning moment. But coming back to the trebuchet and the arrows, shooting it here, obviously the arrows are an independent weapon from one man to one target. Trebuchet much more crew served and cr crew received, really because the damage is going to be, well, much bigger. Again, my trebuchet fails to hit anything. It never hits anything. But that's not the machine. It's not the technology. It's the trebuchet master who's got some learning to do. But there we are. Arrows, fantastically accurate, fantastically devastating. Trebuchets, equally so, just not demonstrated this day. But anyway, thank you very much. We'll see you again. <laughs>